Hello and welcome to Game Guru Max Live broadcast number 15. And I must first apologize for the five minute delay. It seems I have to do things in a very specific order in order to make YouTube make my live broadcast live. <laughs> and the other nine other thousand alternatives where it makes it not live. So hopefully we are live, and more importantly, hopefully you can hear me. So let's do our usual sound test. If anyone can hear me, yes, we can hear you. I think you said yes, we can hear you before I actually asked the question. <laughs> Am I getting too predictable? Anyway, welcome to Game Guru Max Development. This is where I witter on for 5, 10, 15, hopefully not 45 minutes, about what I've been getting up to in the grand, wonderful world of developing the Game Guru Max Games Making Engine. And I've got a couple of things to show you today, and I want to jump straight into them. The first one, if anyone's played with Beta 1 and 2, will have noticed we do have a, a model importer. But it isn't the best thing in the world at importing FBX. Well, we've done some work on that, so the impending Beta 3 will actually have an improved FBX importer. And to demonstrate that, I will actually show before we actually could import an X-File quite nicely. So it imports the X-File, it's got its animation built in there, and you can of do all the texturing. But no, whereas before, it kind of had a bit of a problem with FBXs. Now we can do demo assets, arms, and we can select the arm test FBX. And now we've got our FBX, and of course we actually have provided a color map, and also a normal map, and a surface map as well. So we get this nice um, import. And just to prove that it animates, I am going to import one, load one in that I had earlier. Uh, let's pick this, it might arms 2020, I think it was. Yes. And uh, just put a start marker in, so we get a little bit closer. And what I'm going to do in order to show the animations is use a custom script called View Animations. And we can just run that test game. So now you can see view animations when I click the left mouse button and hold down shift, I can actually animate. And that's an imported FBX. Now I must say in advance that we don't support every single FBX under the sun. But we do now support some nice importing of the models, of the rigging and the animation as well. And we are looking at the Miximo characters. It's sort of the ultimate challenge when importing FBX to do a full animated character from Miximo, and Miximo's got some pretty cool models and animations as well. But that just to show, for Beta 3 you're going to get an improved uh, FBX importer. But that's not the most exciting thing that I want to show today. I want to show this. So again, I'm going to add in a start marker, and I'm going to add in a barrel. So here we go, nice barrel. Zoom in a little bit closer, because the next thing I'm going to add Currently in the Marcus tab, but I'm going to be removing all of these from the Marcus tab. I'm going to put them somewhere else for the uh, the eventual final version. Is yes, you've read it right. It's the particle emitter. So if we move it over the top of the barrel, and then position it sort of over the top and sink it in by right there, and press test game. You've actually got particles. Now, see, from all angles, it's volumetric. It's not a flat decal. These are actual 3D particles being generated. And more than that, these aren't just ordinary particles. These are actually uh, particle editor particles. So if anyone is familiar with our sister product, App Game Kit Studio, we have a DLC called the Particle Editor, which its sole purpose is to create your own particles, whatever they happen to be. Could be a fire effect, a smoke effect, an explosion, plasma, um, a beam of light, some weird dancing lights, vortices, whatever it is, it just goes crazy on the amount of particles and particle effects that you could do. And it's highly recommended. Definitely check out some of the particle editor videos. But we thought, wouldn't it be great if you could create that particle in the particle editor and then just just import it right into Game Guru Max and drop it into your games. And that's what you're looking at right now. It's not an approximation. This is a like-for-like -like mapping of the App Game Kit Studios particle editor shaders rewritten and optimized to render in the Wicked Engine, i.e. in the Game Guru Max engine. 
this is just a sample one uh, that was playing around with during the testing of adding it. But it does all of the things inside here. There is emissions, there's particle line. And there's also things like collisions uh, and, and multiple factors to control where the particles end up. Um, so yeah, you can do the simple things, you can also do the completely wild things. And I'm sure a lot of people can have a lot of fun with that. And also the visuals you'll be able to create um, should be quite stunning. So I'm just going to leave you with that lovely little shot. I would have liked to have shown you more, like opening up the properties of the particles and showing you just some of the sliders. You won't be able to edit everything from the Game Guru Max because that would like just be recreating the particle editor inside Max. And a lot of work went into the particle editor and I wouldn't dream of trying to emulate everything it, try it does successfully. But what I can do is provide you with some properties and settings that make sense when you're adding them to your game such as a scale, so you can scale up your smoke so it's appropriate for either a candle or a, a cur wreck. Um, and things like position and orientation, so if it's a thruster it goes to the side, and if it's a laser it points up, things like that. And of course some other factors such as life's, um, life cycles and colours and other little bits and bobs. But of course we can add and subtract and play around with those until we get the measure just right. You don't really want 500 settings um, for every time you just want to drop in a particle. Ideally, you just click, um, pick from a series of thumbnails, oh, that looks quite nice, click, bump, drop it in your game, done. And then if you want to go deeper, you have the settings for that. So I'm glad to have shown particles. It's not um, 4,000 single objects that have been created and then positioned one at a time. It's using proper GPU particle, lots of clever things where it writes the positions and things into a texture, and then a second shader reads that texture in order to generate the vertices and renders into the screen. It's nice, fast, optimised. I think you'll enjoy it. So what I didn't mention at the very start is you ha now have an opportunity to ask some questions to me about what you've seen today or anything else about the Game Guru Max development, as long as you put a question mark at the end or use the word question in square brackets. So I'm going to scroll to the top of the live chat list and I'm going to see if I can answer your questions. So right at the top, let's get past the uh, the sound test. So thanks for that, everybody. Um, Yep, it is confirmed. I am predictable. Here's the first question. Um, will Max have eight players uh, server or per game? It will be per game. So it's not really like a massive multiplayer server. It's effectively one host and many joiners. So there's one PC, one poor, poor PC having to run all the logic for the entire game. So it's limited to eight simply because... Um, you want to preserve that bandwidth as the host is sending out packets to seven other joiners. So that's why it's limited to eight. So that's per game. And because it's basically sitting on the server, it's effectively and per server as well. Um, another question. Game Guru Max finished question mark question mark. Ah, well. <laughs> is, is, a, is a sculpture ever really finished? Uh, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see, but we certainly continue to keep um, testing the betas, and checking those out. Um, just uh, reset the screen. Um, yeah, there's a particle from a distance, and of course, I didn't mention this, but you can actually add lots and lots of uh, uh, particles. Um, and of course, it's up to you. If you want a gazillion particles, then we're going to have something else like a notification, which tells you if you've added too much to the scene so lower end systems not, might not be able to render 50 million particles but we'll certainly get to that in a, in a future broadcast when i can show you a little bit more of, of what we're doing inside uh, the engine so i'm looking for another question um looks like the question about is it finished has been answered further down we are still in the beta phase beta phase means we can in, indefinitely keep working on it until it's perfect and then we can release it to you so we've got plenty of beta phase to uh, to use. So expect many more betas to be released in the future, in the near future. Here's a question, two questions actually from Fall, Fallen Ninja. Will we get animation blending? Um, I presume by that you mean you've got a, a t an animation data file and a second animation data file and you can sort of blend between them. There's no plans for that. You can certainly stack animations, but you can't sort of arbitrarily blend between two frames. I, I call it interpolation, but I think I know what you mean. But there's no plans for it in version one. You'll just have to edit your animations offline 
and then import those models and animations and then use scripts to control the animation. Here's the second question. Will native Wicked Engine Lua functions be available for usage within GameGuru Max? No. We're using all our own Lua commands. So there are no commands from the Wicked Engine ported over. It, it keeps it simpler that way. If you just started hacking in with the, the, the Wicked Engine commands, all crazy, crazy kinds of nasty could happen. <laughs> and we're not prepared to do that level of testing. So yeah, it will just be the Game Guru uh, Engine Lua commands that you're used to, if you're used to writing scripts. And they're a little bit more higher level, so they're easy to create game logic with, whereas the Wicked Engine Lua commands are probably a little bit lower level, and, and only for the very, very rare people who want to go that low. Here's a question, can you make a tutorial on Photon Multiplayer? That will be coming, both in the form of just regular witters from me, but also as a built-in tutorial into the software as well. Um, but we've got plenty of other things to sort out and share before we actually get to, to showing off multiplayer. Here's a question, can you change the direction of the flame movement? Yes, S position, rotation and scale um, of the widget will be able to affect the particle. I think that's pretty key to be able to have full flexibility with adding the particles. Here's a big question and a question mark at the end. Thank you very much for that. Has the issue whereby certain animated characters when imported are deformed been fixed? Well, it's your mileage may vary. Uh, we are looking, like I said, we're looking at the mix of more FBXs and the, the, the very purpose of the importer is that you can just select one, it imports it, it doesn't mess it up and it animates it properly. So that's still the goal, and we're moving towards that. So please check out Beta 3 when we release it, and then check out importing your FBXs, and let us know if your mileage does indeed vary. Another question below that, will the FBX import support full body characters with animations, and how hard will it be to add custom animations to them? We're not building an animation editor inside GameGuru Max, so I'm just gonna put that one up front. But certainly, if you've got a model that has built-in animation, you'll be able to load import both, in both the model and its animation, and then you can just drop it in, then attach a script to it and tell the script, right, I want you to animate this, I want you to animate that, blah, 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 all the normal good things. So that's effectively what you'll be able to do with the model importer. Um, here's a question. Um, great video, Smiley. Is it possible to make big games now? We are going to use the multi-node system on the terrain, so if, you, if I just show you the editor now, that's just the default that we are happy with in order for a high resolution geometry on the terrain. But you see further off in the distance, whereas Max, you basically just have a hard line, with, uh, sorry, with Classic, with Max, you'll be able to just add another terrain node. So another terrain will appear here, you want one over there, it adds one there, you want one further, it adds one after that. So you can create some very large uh, games, yes. Here's a question. Will we have a companion AI or ally AI, not for release? Of course, you can do all this with script, but I think what you mean is, will you be able to have an ally or a companion AI out of the box? Um, we're not going to do that script for release, but uh, I think it's inevitable that we're going to, when we get onto the AI and the, the, the nuances of AI, I think we will be looking to add that. Uh, question. Um, Noticed using the GG pickupable that the hand sprite doesn't show. Are they still disabled? Um, yeah, the uh, the two D sprite thing. It's because we have VR now, you see, and uh, the hand didn't really work in sort of a VR rendering situation. It sort of used a laser instead. Um, so the hand, I think, was removed for that reason. But you know, if everybody wants to see the hand, certainly for the people who are interested in VR at this particular moment in time, then I think it can be resurrected. Uh, or it could simply be that it's just not been connected up when we actually um, built the uh, built back the, the script support for the 2D commands. So uh, yeah, if that's still not in beta 3, uh, give us a buzz on the on the Game Guru beta forum thread, which reports these issues. Um, I will be going through that actually this week, transposing them all to our internal task list. Uh, so thanks very much for all your feedback on beta 1 and 2, super useful. Um, another question is, when should we expect to be able to add normal maps to the terrain? Well, it wouldn't be your sort of job to add normal maps. You would select um, a texture. That texture would be associated with a normal map and a surface map. And then all three 
would um, sort of conspire to be painted on the, uh, to the canvas, onto the large terrain canvas. We are still fighting the storage and memory requirements of a massive virtual textured terrain, which is why you're not seeing normals yet. But as soon as we've cracked that, i.e. made the files smaller and optimised how they save and load and, and are edited, um, then we're going to look at adding the extra texture layers. I, I do think it's important to have normals. It's just a question of... Will anyone notice, uh, especially when you've got lots of things on top of the terrain, and is there any way we can sort of use it in a more sparsely uh, fashion? So you've got something similar to run length encoding, where most of the terrain could just be flat normal, so the same colour, and only those areas that actually have normals detail could be stored in the virtual texture. So all those sorts of things we'll be looking at in order to make sure that your level files aren't huge, because virtual textures can be quite large. Uh, quite large. Here's a question, um, where would we get the particle editor? Just type out App Game Kit Studio particle editor in Google and it will take you straight there with lots of screenshots and videos. I think you'll like it, it's very nice. I wish I'd have written it actually. Here's another question, will we eventually be able to import our own terrain maps, something like a .raw format? Yeah, that's been requested a few times, um, sometimes requesting the idea of importing height maps. So the specialist third party tools out there which just create height maps for terrains with erosion patterns and all the rest of it. Can we have those in? Well, I've already done the converter from the old classic terrains onto Game Guru Max. So a little bit of that code already exists. We would just need to add a little bit extra to import height maps. I personally have that on my list, but it certainly won't be on release. Plenty of other things that we're going to do to get the, the release version to where we want it. But I agree, I think importing height maps and being able to add them to the terrain, even dynamically, so different terrains can receive different height maps. Almost like a ma massive super brush, a uh, geometry brush, I think, yeah, that would be a super useful addition. Um, here's another question. Hello, Game Guru. Can you only make shooting games, or did you innovate in this aspect? Yeah. If you're going to use Game Guru Max, expect only to create first-person games, and predominantly running around with a gun and shooting things. Certainly we have characters that can speak and you can create other game logics and narrative and maybe exploration and trading and learning and all the rest of it. But I'd say it's fair to say that the crux of the game logic is player with weapon collecting ammo and health, running around shooting AI whose sole object is to shoot you. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much the definition of a shooting game. And I think it's right to be honest, when we're painting a picture of what Max is and the games you can create with it. So I think you've hit it on the head. Predominantly shooting games, but you can certainly work around uh, the engine you want to create some spin-offs of that, which doesn't necessarily involve violence. So I'm looking through the, for the next question mark and I found one. Is it possible to save imported meshes as X files? Save imported meshes as X files. We're trying to get away from the X files. Um, we certainly still support them. In fact, the converter, which converts Classic to Max, actually uses the old X parser just for maximum compatibility with the old formats. But the first thing it does, it creates a DVO, and Max just uses the DVO. We really want to get into the realms of using GLTFs and FBXs and OBJs and our own internal proprietary format. We don't really want to keep dragging along the old X file format. I think we're probably the last person in the world uh, engine in the world to actually import X files, so we are trying to get away from it. But our converter will do a good job of grabbing your old X files and getting them into DVR to use in Max. Here's a question: Do you plan to support a GG FX shaders? No, uh, chalk and cheese, apples and oranges. The old FX files was all built around our vision for what PBR rendering should look like, and I was unanimously condemned. <laughs> it's not correct. Uh, so we decided to use the Wicked Engine. The Wicked Engine has its own set of shaders. It uses all its own shaders. So we didn't need to port our old X FX files over because the Wicked ones were far superior and very nice. Um, so we don't need to port all the old FX files. And if you wanted to sort of, you had your own custom FX shader and you wanted to use that, then I recommend you grab a... Um, a template shader from the Wicked Engine, start playing around with that, code what you want there, and then you can have that running within the Wicked Engine. But I think you'll have everything that you need with the, the shaders that we provide, and all the settings that tap into those shaders. So I can't see a scenario where you'd want to create your own 
shader unless you're extremely <laughs> fastidious about what you want to use the uh, what you want to put on the GPU for the processing. Um, so yeah, there is no forward compatibility for the .fx format. Um, here's a question: um, Can we use substance materials in Game Guru Max? Yes, providing it exports as PNG or JPEG, they are just like any other texture. So you can have a model and then you can do custom materials and then select those textures that you may have created in Substance Painter and uh, and then just apply them to your object. And providing they are obeying all the, uh, the metalness rules for PBR rendering, then they should render somewhat similarly in Game Guru Max. Another question, uh, please consider resurrecting the roof removal. It's a bugger working inside. It certainly is, isn't it? Um, again, the reason is the alpha clip, which is what we called it, um, was just part of one of our own custom shaders. Wicked Engine, by default, doesn't really have or doesn't acknowledge the need for what we would call an alpha clip. But yeah, being able to just chop off all geometry above a certain y-axis coordinate, super useful. Um, and I certainly would be looking to reinstate that. May require me going into the shaders and adding a little bit of extra code. But we're not averse to that. In fact, the particles that you just saw um, are a testimony to us having to create a, a very large custom shader uh, in order to do something similar. Okay, so scrolly scrolly, the next question is, does a Wicked have a cartoon shader? Question mark. One that draws lines around things. Yeah, the big, big, thick black line around objects. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen a shader like that, and uh, no simple um, function calls in order to activate that. Um, but yeah, if there's, if there's more requests for cartoon shaders, we can certainly pass it on to the main Game Guru Engine Discord chat, um, and then perhaps down the road we'll do one ourselves because you know we do now have access to creating custom shaders uh, for the Game Guru Max engine. Um, here's another question. Will the uh, packs and bundles from Game Guru work with Game Guru Max? Sure. For the most part, yes. So what you would do, you would, uh, the easiest way is just have it in Game Guru Classic. And then let's say, for example, the Abandoned Apartments pack has a level, an FPM. All you would do, you would just go to File and Open, select that Abandoned Apartments FPM um, from the Classics Map Bank folder. And then Max will not only import that model, find it will also find all the assets and copy those over as well. So it will actually then have that level in Max, but it's actually auto-copied all the assets across. Um, we figure that's a super convenient way of doing it, and that's what I'd recommend you do if you want to sort of grab your uh, old packs and move them into Max, because there's a lot of automation there for you. Um, another question, what happens to the FPE files for F FX files then? Do we just point to CSO files? Um, yeah, it's sort of related to the same thing, isn't it? If you've got your own shaders, then how do you tell the FPE where your new shaders are? Well, as I said, we're not really out of the box supporting your own custom shaders. We're probably hardly supporting our own custom shaders in the in the form that you can sort of list out and attach to FPEs. So for the release, don't expect to be able to easily connect your own custom shaders to FPE files, at least until we've done it first. So we have an idea of what's going on and then we'll be able to give you some advice about how you would do it. But yeah, it probably would link to a CSO file, probably. Um, and I think that might be the only way. So yeah, uh, but we'll we'll look at that when we get to it ourselves. Um, here's a question: Will there be an advanced user mode? Good insight. Yes. Um, as we were doing, we've been doing a lot of UI review recently, just looking at the flow of going into the app as if it was a brand new user and how easy or hard uh, the experience is. And what we found is there's a there's a lot of things that we would look literally like to hide behind some sort of advanced user mode just so new users aren't really then hit by a lot of buttons and a lot of sliders all at once but then can be easily activated to see those extra details and also we'll be spreading lots of help buttons built-in tutorial help buttons all around that an advanced user might not need because they actually know everything so a button would also switch that off and in order to facilitate that in the editor uh, in the edit thing instead of all this we're actually going to have a settings 
dialog. So you select settings, then it will open up a whole new dialog where you can specify um, all the settings in one place, plus decide you'll switch between a beginner or rather a, a new user and an advanced user. So, so good prediction there. That that should make it into the into the release version. Um, let's just do two more questions because uh, I've just looked at the clock and boy do I like to talk. Uh, is the next one. Will we have a weapon editor? No. I've always wanted to do a weapon editor, but it's just one of those things that never quite got enough of a priority over lots of other things. So I'm afraid in order to create a weapon, you're going to have to become something of a 3D modeler, an animator, and some knowledge of the technical knowledge of how it integrates into Game Guru Max. But the good news is we're going to write a, an article and provide a template. So if you did want to create your own weapons, it isn't complete guesswork and we give you a sort of a guide to follow. And the last question, and it's just done by order, I'm not being preferential here. Uh, here's a question from 3Com Do you plane improve weather? I presume that means do I plan to improve weather? Sure. Sure, the current weather was just something we added in quite a while ago, and it's using sort of an old technique. We now have particles. We have a really good particles, and we can have a lot more weather with said particles. So I think what I'll probably be doing is creating my weather effects with the particle editor, and then use that. When you select your weather, it will actually select one of these pre-designed particle effects that I would provide. Because it's just better. You get a lot more... Um, Instead of having, you know, 15 flakes of snow, you now have 15 million flakes of snow, etc. So look out for that. Yes, I do plan to improve the weather. Now we've got some fa fancy new technology to power it with. So I know there's more questions and I do apologise I can't get to them. But fear not, if you check out the Game Guru forums later on, you'll actually see a recording of this live broadcast, plus all of the questions that you've asked today with my answers in text, including the answers I couldn't get round to. So thanks for your attention once again. Sorry I didn't give you any advance warning on when this was, but hopefully you'll now get used to the fact that every Wednesday, 4pm BST, I will be here at the usual time, doing a bit of a waffle, showing you what we're getting up to in the land of Game Guru Max. Well, thanks very much for listening, and I'll see you next week. Bye!